Hello, and welcome to a very special live event celebrating Hallmark Channel's The Way Home. We already know we're getting season three, so more on that later, but this is extra exciting because we are barreling towards that season finale on Sunday, and we have quite the little crew assembled here for the final episode of Club Pond here on These Lives. I am Brienne Heldman, executive editor at People Magazine, and I am so excited to be the one to introduce Dell to adult Jacob. We have with us today Andy McDowell, who plays Dell. Hi there. So happy to be here. And we have Sadie LaFlame Snow, who plays Alice. Evan Williams, who plays Elliot. Hey. For the very first time, please welcome adult Jacob, Spencer McPherson. Hi guys, this is so exciting. I'm kind of freaking out just seeing Andy and Spencer in the same room. Not even the literal same room, but the, but the virtual same room is still kind of as a fan bugging me out. Um, we obviously have no idea if they're ever really going to get to reunite. But I have to ask you, Andy, what were your thoughts when you realized we were going to get to meet adult Jacob this season? Oh, well, you, you know, we did the read through together and I just was so impressed with not how, not only how physically he is so cast so beautifully, but just also there's the spiritual essence too that I thought was the casting was really beautiful and I'm enjoying watching his work. I think he does such such beautiful work and yeah, he's a, a great asset, just, just wonderful asset to the cast. I'm very lucky to have him. Oh, Spencer, what was that first day on set like? Were people coming up to you going, oh my gosh, it's Jacob. I can't <laughs> believe I'm meeting Jacob. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I, I don't want to say overwhelming because it was, it was, it was amazing um, <laughs> how passionate everyone is about this show. And that's kind of the green light, I guess, to, to go uh, uh, give it a hundred. And uh, it was a really, really cool first day. Um, a lot going on, a lot of action. I had a little bit of a wardrobe mishap. My my pants tore in front of me into <laughs> crew and cast. So I think that was a good- I forgot about that. Yeah, it was a good <laughs> moment. And, um, it's a that. great omen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is that is quite the uh, the first day, and, and also that was that crazy scene on the beach that we talked about previously with the horses, and there was so much action, yeah. um, an unusual amount of action actually for this series. Were yeah. you were you anticipating more action going forward, or were you kind of relieved to have a little more stoic scenes coming forward? You know what, I I, I love doing stuff like that. It's it's extremely fun, and um, and we had a really really great director grant harvey doing that episode and he just made the whole process super uh super fast pace and and we were all just dialed in and uh, I, I love doing that i love doing the stoics i love doing it all <laughs> uh evan what were your thoughts when you first saw spencer as jacob on screen really there's so many times in this show since we know that the audience is paying such close attention when we know something impactful is going to happen, I'm, I'm going to speak for everybody else too. I apologize. <laughs> but uh, when I know that something impactful is going to happen, it feels like we are giving the audience a gift on Christmas morning. And it, there's been so much build up to Jacob. And so I, as soon as I met Spencer and realized the type of, uh, the type of professional that he is, and we also share some roots uh, with the Degrassi, the next generation, and uh or the you know the, the various degrassi iterations and uh i i just was so excited because it's part of the heartbeat of the show and there's so much wish fulfillment and so much pain and grief and trauma that has been worked through to get to this point so even just the characterization that he's doing carries so much weight and knowing that he was gonna rise to the challenge and excel was really exciting exciting for me to see and it's just great to have more people joining the ranks too more people to uh help us create this fiction together and tell the story and to it and i think to a man and to a woman we're all doing that 
Sadie, were there any sort of initiations or things you told Spencer on day one about what to anticipate? <laughs> I think, honestly, we, we bumped into each other in like in the, um, I was at the green room or like the lunch room or something. And like, as soon as I saw him, I knew I was like, hey, you're Jacob. Nice to meet you. I'm Sadie. Like, you, I just knew. And so that was really exciting. We, we have a lot of mutual friends, you know, we're Toronto, Toronto locals. So I, it was kind of like, it was like, when are we going to find Jacob? But I was also like, when am I going to meet Spencer? So it was really <laughs> exciting. It felt like, you know, the final piece of the puzzle and, and building up the Landry family in the present day, um, like to fill in mentally where Jacob is, um, like what he's like as a grown up person. And because I'm really attached to, to him as a, as an eight year old. And so to, to finally see Spencer and be like, Oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's exactly how it would be. <laughs> so I don't know. It's been, it's been really cool to see Kyler and Spencer's work as siblings in the past too. It's such a, such a beautiful progression of their relationship and to try and, I mean, it helps to, to have cross paths a couple times to keep that connection that Alice has um, because Kat's coming home and continually filling her in on how things are going with uh, Jacob in the past. And so it was nice to finally meet and be like, okay, this is the person that, that Kat is filling me in about. And um, this is the grown up version of the kid that we lost so long ago. And so, no, it's been, it's just been, you know, everyone is like, where is Jacob? And so to finally have someone fill in that question and actually like dig into those things about where he's been and what kind of person he is. It's just the most exciting thing for all of us, I think. Awesome. I want to go back to the present day because we have to talk about the farm. Andy, Dell cannot sell that farm. Are the rest of you with me? Like she cannot. It cannot happen. So I have to ask, if if Dell yeah. couldn't take the money from Brady way back when, now he's much more family. In many ways, that his family money is is partly Alice's. Could she maybe take Brady's money now? Like, why hasn't Brady saved the day? Hmm. I I don't know. I mean, that's not a question for me. That's a question <laughs> for the writers. You know, I, I I don't I have not created this this. Uh, Storyline. This is their storyline. Um, and I, you know, I think, I, I think trying to understand, you know, the thing that I, I, things that I think about are what would it be like for uh, a woman not to have a husband, no, no support from anyone else. And having lived on a ranch before, I know what it, what it really is all about. Mm -hmm. Just the, the backbone that it takes for a woman to run something like that. You know, that's what I, I think about, you know, character, character wise, like what has this done to this woman? Who does this make this woman? How does it make her feel about herself? Um, so, you know, I like to I love to lean heavy on the fact that I think that Dale has lost a lot of her femininity and I'm just hoping that there is some way that we'll find that she is capable to bring softness back into, into her life. So these are the kind of things I, that go through, <laughs> as an actress, that go through my head that make the whole idea of what the farm is and losing the farm. Mm -hmm. That's tangible. That's what I think about. Yeah. Well, I'm going to skip ahead to what we were going to talk about later because you, you mentioned her softness and her femininity. And I feel like Sam is starting to really bring that out of her. I have so. It's cracking her shell it. a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she could use it. I think she could use some gentleness and some kindness. Yeah. And you do, I think, you know, you start to see a, a lighter spirit which, between the two of them. And um, I think that, you know, that's fun. It's fun for me to play, to dab around in that. It could be really boring to watch her be hard all the time. It would not be an interesting character <laughs> to play either. So I don't think it would be fun to watch or play. Yeah. Are you rooting for them personally? I don't want to tell you what I think because that's my, I, 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 I have concepts. I have, t I'm telling the writers what I, what, uh. I, what I hope for, but I don't want to tell you what I hope for. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I don't know if they're going to use it. I don't know where they're going to go with this. I know what I would like. I know what I would, I feel what I sense could be a great possibility, but we'll see, you know. Yeah. 
It's nice. It's nice to have a some lightness for for the character, something happy. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Dell had some had kind of two love stories between Sam and also the horse. I love yeah, the horse. Is her good. And horse. I wish I had more time with the horse. You know? <laughs> there's, they shoot so much. They they cover so much. So we don't we don't have as much time to do the things that I wish we I wish we had a lot more time. Mm-hmm. But you know we're doing the best we can. I think they do a beautiful job. I really do. Oh, I think all the stuff in the 1800s is so beautifully shot, and I think they're doing a wonderful job. Really, are doing a wonderful job. But I am thankful for the moments with the horse as well. Yes, I have <laughs> quiet moments with the horse. I'm really thankful for that as well. So thank you. Thanks for the horse. Thanks for the. I man. gotta say, I got. I, got, <laughs> I, I gotta say, you you shine in those moments with the horse too. Uh, right, you really, really do. You can tell that you're. You tell you're a real live horse girl. Like that yeah, horse really okay. is. <laughs> oh, you're sweet yeah, to me. Really. Thank you. I like the mystery of it. You know, I thought that was, when I read it, I thought this is really special. You know, the mystery of it was really interesting. There's so much mystery on the show as well, with the pond and everything. Just one more little element of mystery. I thought that was, it act just a little bit more, another layer, another beautiful layer. Absolutely. I mean, I do wonder if that horse has come through time at some point and maybe was, maybe it was Dell's horse growing up or something. Oh, you guys, I don't think that deeply. I just think that's happy for heaven. So I don't go into like the, it was blah, blah, blah. I just think the mystery of, of the horse showing up is, is enough. I don't have to, but what I mean, everybody's enjoying you and all those wacky little things, but. For yeah. me, I just think it's a horse that shows up. I guess it's hard. It might be. I think it's the pond. Maybe it did. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? The dog, the horse. Who knows? What do I know? Who knows? Um, but of course, I don't know anything about the pond. So I'm saying, you know, Dale doesn't, as far as I know, <laughs> I don't. No one's <laughs> told me I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Well, see, you probably know more than me. No, I don't, but I, (laughs) (laughs) Um, well, Evan, I want to talk about Nick for a second. Um, When Nick discovered that notebook, why didn't Elliot just lie and say he was writing a novel or something? Why tell Nick the truth? I think that we're watching Elliot move a general trajectory towards being more upfront and no more secrets. He even says that in uh, the last episode, no more secrets. I think that it's weighs very heavily to be having to carry all this stuff by yourself for so long. And uh, while at the same time, it was a huge problem. I'm sure there's the opportunity just to get some stuff off your shoulders. You know, I, I, I think that it was a little bit, too abrupt also it wasn't like cat was right beside him you know so he probably couldn't be like uh like if she said yeah and he said no at the same time it'd be even worse <laughs> like you can't add insult to injury so i think that uh i get elliot and nick are close they're they've been friends since they're kids and uh at some point you've got to be honest with your friends even if you know it's going to hurt them and i think elliot's realizing that yeah sadie i have to ask about the scene between alice and adult nick because I do feel like that relationship finally kind of got resolved in this way. And I also have to give some credit to the writers because that could have been so ick. It like <laughs> most paths would have been icky and they managed to do it in a way that was really thoughtful. Uh, but yes. how was that for you kind of seeing, I, to me, it felt, felt like the very end of that Nick arc. Yeah, I think, you know, Alice falls really hard for Nick as a teenager. And I think Nick falls pretty hard for Alice as a teenager. And so it's something that, that for adult Nick, he thinks back on fondly, but he's, he's moved on. It was confusing. It was maybe a confusing first love. And for Alice, it feels really fresh um, and also very confusing. So I think both of them on top of like, the heartbreak of like, oh, they're my first love. You're dealing with this, like, and where did they go? And like, why did they just kind of like evaporate into thin air? And like for Alice, like how weird it is that adult Nick kept showing up and she's like, ah, this is like a different person in my mind. Like go away. (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, So I think, I think it was good for them 
to have that conversation. And I think that the, the writers and, and, um, the director of that episode, John Fawcett, like handled the scene with a lot of care and a lot of, um, you know, they take Alice's emotions as a teenager seriously. And yet there was no, there was no weirdness between them because Alice understands that time travel feels like two separate timelines to her. She feels confused by the relationships with people she has in both the past and the present. She gets upset at present day Elliot about things that happened in the past, but ultimately she knows that she's had to forgive him over and over again or, or things with her mom in the same way. Um, and so I think it was nice that they were able to just have a candid conversation and she knows how hard it is for people to find out about time travel. And so she was also being careful with his emotions about it. Um, and now they can, I mean, if Nick come back, comes back to town, that could, th the fact that they both have to know that, that could be a bit just <laughs> weird. Um, because how do you know that someone's just like, could be, could, could be time traveling, could have just been in the pond. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it was good that we closed that loop for mm -hmm. Alice emotionally. And I think um, that we can have Nick as a part of their community as an adult and not be wondering if he's wondering who Alice is and just have that be just have that chapter kind of closed for both of them in a way that feels right and and like c complicated but uncomplicated yeah they finally got just yeah okay quick show of hands how many people were relieved that there was some sort of explanation about why people were not recognizing Alice from the Y2K area in the apartment because I was relieved I mean, it wasn't a great explanation, but it was an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Fine. We're going with I it. I, remember, I just never meet people in my real life and wonder if they've come through a pond from the future. So I, mean, yeah. I don't think personally I was looking for an explanation, yeah. but I know that lots of fans had that question. And so to just touch on that was good. But at the same time, I'm like, do you know anyone in your life that you're wondering mm -hmm. if they're from <laughs> the if future? from the past. Mm. Didn't think so. Great question. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think a lot of the like the sci-fi elements, I kind of just like take the leap when I watch. Mm. It's like, mm. yeah, if you really realistically think about all of the like variables of, of all of this, it it's in, in in a real life context, it's completely like I don't even know as Nick if I would you know will, be willing to accept that as. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Do you know? Like I don't know. It just feels like um. Yeah, the I, I I wouldn't question like that personally. It's a more yeah. logical explanation for why Alice looks like Alice than most. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. I told Teen Cat like back in the day, she was like, "What? Like Alice? What are you? Why are you being so weird? Like?" And I was like, "I'm a time traveler." And she was like, "Ah, you're so funny." So like, <laughs> people are always willing to accept what they're willing to accept when they're ready to know it. And I think. I think that's kind of why Alice didn't tell Nick back in the day, like, Nick, uh, you know, I'm really into you and everything, but I'm from the future and I'm going to bump into you and you're going to be 40 and it's going to be weird. Like, you know, I just think that we only, we can only have those conversations when the characters are ready to know that information. Cause Alice has already told, yeah. tried it with someone who didn't and it, it <laughs> flopped. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I also think it's maybe my fault because Elliot had the line in season one. There was one kind of throwaway line where uh, he's explaining to to Alice, um, and it's so early in their relationship when he's saying that uh, uh, memories are fickle and that you don't really you remember your memories the way you think they were, not the way they actually were. But I know in that moment I was playing the present circumstances with Alice, and so I kind of made it a throwaway line. And it turns out that I shouldn't have done that. I should have really like hammered that point home. And that would have confused a lot less people. Yeah, it was my fault. No, no one, it didn't change anything ultimately. Um, <laughs> but I want to talk about, speaking of cat, um, I want to talk about that scene, Andy, with Alex Hook of the big fight. Because Alex crushed that scene, as did you. But she's not here, so we'll, we'll cheers to her. That was incredible. Um, but what was the vibe like on set that day? Because I, I feel like that was one of the most intense scenes we've actually seen in two seasons. 
I wasn't looking forward to that scene. <laughs> no, I completely depended on her. That one and another fight that we have. Uh, you know, I have to think about my voice, too, when I'm doing it, because I try to do a lighter, younger voice mm. when I'm playing that character. And it's not how I fight. I don't fight like that. Mm. So, it's you know, it's really out of my comfort zone. Um, you don't want to fight with me. I don't fight like that. I, my When I fight, it's much more like a man. So I don't, I don't fight that sort of whatever that is. So I, you know, I did, I wanted them to be happy. That's all I was like, I want to make these, I want to make everybody happy. So I know what they're looking for. I can read it. I can see it. <clears throat> Any, both of those fights I did with Alex Hook, she's fabulous. I completely was leaning on her because she seemed real comfortable. It seemed like this was something that she enjoyed doing. It wasn't something I enjoyed doing. <laughs> It was painful for me, honestly. It's not It's not how I fight. I don't fight like that. Um, but it was Alex. It was all, all due to Alex that it worked. It worked. Without her, it would not have worked. Aww. <laughs> yeah, well, she was it was, it it was, was quite crazy. a dance. So, I'm yeah. Not, I, you don't want to get in a fight with me. I, I don't want to get a fight with you yeah, or I'm with Joe, so, for that matter. <laughs> I'm so curious. I, I want to see it though. Like, how do men fight? I'm so curious. <laughs> I'm not vulnerable when I fight. Not, not in the least. I see. I see. Not, no, I just, uh, I'm not like that. But I, you know, I know I could read it and I could see it and I could see that, you know, you know what they wanted. But I think it, you know, I do think it worked. I always wish we had more time. <laughs> I think that could have, you know, it could have been a bigger scene. It could have been more time and having to go from the phone call and, you know, just everything was so fast. And, but yeah, it was all because of Alex. The only reason it's any good is. Because of oh, how do you shake it off after, after filming a scene like that and kind of get out of that headspace? I don't know. It doesn't, it's not, I just like sit there and go, Oh God, I hope it was all right. That's kind of all I do. I was just like, oh, God, I hope that was okay. On a scene like that, I mean, it's different if you have to cry. You sit there and cry all day. That's, you know, that's painful. But I, 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 you know, I just, I guess I'm miserable probably because I'm scared I'm horrible. I'm probably just miserable and hating myself at that moment. <laughs> that's probably what I was doing. Pure misery. Just going, oh, I don't know what I did. I hope that was okay. I hope that's what they wanted. <laughs> Spencer, is it it's a so much of acting, isn't it? Uh, just yeah. pure misery. Pure pure misery. Self <laughs> not, not really. I mean, but a lot of times it's great joy. A lot of times it feels good. A lot of times you're like, God, that felt really, really good. But when you, you know, you have to step into something that's not like you and try to figure it out. Yeah. 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 Not always fun. <laughs> Spencer, how does it feel for you to kind of it must it must be kind of a relief in some ways to hear someone as incredible as the legendary Andy McDowell talk about oh, that that <laughs> self doubt after each scene. I mean, does it does it kind of feel I don't know grounding? I uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I I feel like I'm a very like anxious person, so I'm constantly like proofreading things in the moment, and and I guess that doesn't necessarily. Um, Maybe I don't know when people think of like acting or actors, they maybe don't. Maybe that's not their first assumption, but uh, yeah, I mean, like I think it's like it's nice to know that there's common ground that we're all kind of like in the dark, feeling our way around, like hoping that we're, we're getting something right. But uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to go back to um, Ele uh, Evan. We got to see so much of Elliot's backstory this season, which I think was really a treat. Was there anything about that that surprised you? Uh, well, they didn't tell me uh, until the script came out for episode nine that it was actually Elliot who put the hole in the wall. Uh, spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen episode nine. Uh, sorry. Uh, it was Elliot. <clears throat> 
and uh, I was, so it was really interesting seeing that hole and it was a toss up to me, whether it was Elliot or whether it was his father or whether it was something completely unrelated. And there was a scene early in the, where we see Elliot taking stuff off the shelf, like taking a book away and seeing the hole and then seeing him pause for a minute and then just cover the, cover it back up. And that scene ended up getting cut as like a ton of scenes end up getting cut because that's just, that's television. That's the medium we're working in. Mm -hmm. But uh, so it was, all, I knew that it was something deep and I just love, I love so much that people get to see why Elliot the way he is, the way he is, because it's been a gentle, slow kind of widening and opening as the show has gone on. Because really at the beginning of the season, or the beginning of the show, he was kind of a golden boy a little bit like sort of just like he's the next door neighbor and uh it's really pleasing to play a character that has all the other shades and mm -hmm. i'm gonna keep pushing for that kind of storytelling with the character because that's what i'm interested in and doesn't mean that it, he, he I, I know there's a lot of audience members that are disappointed with the way that elliot has handled some things too and that's cool with me i'm fine with that i'm i like to play a character that makes mistakes and that needs to learn things and can learn things and can be better. And uh, I think that relates to how we experience our lives. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I have to ask, because when we first saw the hole in the wall, I immediately was like, there's something hidden back there. Is that wall coming down before mm -hmm. the end of the season? Well, there's the pirate's treasure. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I absolutely am not going to tell you anything. But it's not because I don't like you; it's because I do like you. We don't spoil. We don't spoil the show because we want to continue giving. We want to give continue giving the gift. We want to titrate it in little packets. Okay. So we should give a supercut going of everyone telling Brian that we're not telling you that from all the Facebook lives <laughs> because we all <laughs> <laughs> well, Sadie, my question for you is next. Um, was there a point as you were reading the scripts where you were over the course of the season where you were worried that the rules of the pond were breaking or changing? I think, you know, we see the Lingermore party and we see Elliot choose himself and choose his own life and choose his own destiny for the first time. And he tells Alice like, you know, stop messing with my life. I just want, like, we, we really start to see kind of how, how hard her presence has been on him over the years in his like young adult life. And so I think that was the first time that I felt a real fear for, for their relationship and, like the I, Alice has pretty much subscribed to the idea that what happened will always happen, but I think that that she didn't account for how things that have always happened could change her relationships to the people in in the present. So the idea that she could go back to the past and see mm -hmm. and, and live through that interaction with Elliot and live through him saying, I don't, I don't care if this changes things forever. And, and seeing like how that would alter her relationship with her mom and Elliot in the present forever. Um, I mean, we're, we're happy that we find out that Kat hit her head and that's why she doesn't remember Alice. And it's not because she doesn't exist, <laughs> um, but it, it is like, it is kind of scary for her. And I think that time travel, like her being erased from the timeline has not really been a threat because there, she's never been in the same timeline as herself before. Cat mm -hmm. has, Kat, yes. as, like Kylo, adult Cat has traveled and been in the same timeline as her teenage version of herself. So she's watching things change for herself in front of her eyes, but mm -hmm. Alice hasn't had that experience. So I think that was really hard for her to um, go through that. And I don't know if, I think the fact that time travel is our, our device leaves that open as a possibility down the line. Um, but I, yeah, that was, that was, that was something that really, it was a different 
thing to play with um, in that script, in that episode. Absolutely. Okay, Spencer, why do you think it's so important for Jacob to stay in 1814? Um, it's, it's interesting because I feel like, uh, you know, as an audience, we, we get the perspective. We have, you know, Evan's character who, who kind of gives us the rules. And for Sadie, it's been kind of like a, like a magical experience. There's been a lot of difficulties and hardships, don't get me wrong. But I mean, like, I think for Jacob, it, it's like, uh, it's essentially robbed him of his entire life. Like it's, it's sent him somewhere for 25 years. He, he doesn't see the pond as this like uh, helpful tool or aid. He sees it as something that like took him, robbed him of his memories, maybe almost killed him and uh, sent him somewhere where, you know, it, all the trappings of, uh, it, it also begs the question, like if he were to go back, how would he be able to adapt to like a world with all of our like modern trappings mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i don't think that his memory of of his childhood is, is very clear um so i think that that he sees the pond as like hey who's to say i don't jump in and and i i come out and i don't know it's the ice age <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's an incredibly terrifying prospect for him I think that he's found he he's found his way to cope. He's found his found family with Elijah and, and Susanna and, and Thomas, and he's gonna he's loyal to that. He's gonna hold on to that uh, because even the the risk of, of finding out what's on the other side maybe it's, it's too great of a risk for him to know. So. That's fair. All right, I want to do a couple of rapid rounds before we wrap this up. So for each of you, um, I want to know your favorite scene, and it can be either to have filmed and you have to tell us why, or to have watched because you loved someone's performance or whatever. And we're gonna start with Sadie. Okay, um, my favorite scene, <laughs> whoa, okay. Uh, actually, I had a lot of fun filming Lingermore, like filming the party sequences. It, we were in this huge mansion and and like so many background and it kind of felt like a party, but it was just, it was really cool. It was very exciting. And I, I didn't really know what I was looking for in terms of like what the event like what the bad thing was going to be. So it felt, I felt very like motivated and I don't know, it was really cool. Um, and then one of my favorite scenes to watch was when Jacob says he uh, isn't coming back. And I just think that I was so happy. Okay. Not happy, but I was so, <laughs> it was so gratifying to see that he wasn't on the same page as the rest of us. And like, that all of us are just like, yeah, and it'll just go exactly how we plan. And he, and he's just all a part of this big plan to bring Jacob home. But he's like, actually, I'm a person too. And I have things, I have people in my life. I have things I need to do. I have opinions. And I think we all needed that kind of wake up call a little. Yeah, um, I love that. And okay, one more. I also just okay. really like, I, I really like the scene where Del tells Alice that she didn't sell the farm because she was holding on to it for an Alice that she hadn't met yet. And I thought that was really beautiful. And I think that Dell and Alice have grown together a lot more this season. And even though people are kind of all running off on Dell, <laughs> and she's been on her own in a lot of ways, um, I think they're starting to be more tender with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really beautiful. So I have a lot of favorites. <laughs> next. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, do you want to go next? Okay. I, I like the character of the pond. I like watching them jump in the pond. I like <laughs> watching them, as miserable as they are, I like watching them come out of the pond. I just think <laughs> those images are really powerful and romantic and fun to watch. I love the scene when I was down by the pond with Alice talking to her about the pond. I thought mm -hmm. that was a beautiful scene. I think the scene of me on the horse uh, yelling at, at Kyler, at Catherine, anytime near the pond, I just think there's some, there's the mystery of the pond. I think that it, character, the character, the pond character, I think is so beautiful. So I would say that. And then I remember last year shooting, um, shooting the scene with Jefferson when I'm old and he is young and 
then I think, you know, they saw how beautiful that was. So they ended up doing that in season two where he comes back and I have this, whether he's there or whatever, this feeling he's there, but you see him visually see him there. I thought that was really beautiful. I love the older woman and the, and the younger man and the thought of the tenderness of him touching her after she had been alone for so long, having him touch her and having that tenderness because she doesn't really have that Mm -hmm. having that tenderness with him. I thought was really beautiful. A nice element this year. Nice. Evan, you're up. Uh, I, I, I have a favorite moment with each one of the Landry women. I'm when I, uh, my favorite moment with Sadie is when, uh, the, the first time we have the awkward moment in the science classroom uh, where she comes in and says that she found the Polaroids and Elliot swivels around. I just thought that like it was one of the few moments where you see it on the page when you read it on the script and it actually translated the same way on camera. So that was really fun. And it was it's always fun to play that stuff with Sadie and uh, with, with Andy, the uh, the calf the cat uh, birth scene that we, which was like an absolute circus to shoot and uh, but you were so it, adorable it was, so uh, cute well, you end. were you were too and, and not a lot of people thing. know this not, not a lot of people know this but but andy really took the reins in this in this scene and like it turned out the I way it cried. is because of her so yeah oh, yeah well it's that it's that experience we're talking about and wow. I, I i always really remember too it was my first day shooting with kyler uh, the scene with Elliot and Kat up in the loft, our very first loft scene where we hadn't, it was the first time talking to each other in 20 years. And uh, there was, it was so fun to play history with an actor that you had really just met. And so we really discovered each other in that scene. It was beautiful. And then a, a scene that I wasn't a part of that I loved watching was the scene between Kat and Susanna in the most recent mm-hmm. episode. I thought it was just so, that whole sequence was so beautifully done with so much nuance and it made me feel like in that moment I was like wow this is the kind of storytelling that I'm really proud to be a part of because I think there's there's so much space for uh different types of connection and uh you know I, I'm always going to be a Calliot shipper uh but the uh he, the, the fact that there's there are different kinds of love as well there are different kinds of connection and uh I think that the depth and breadth of human experience is vast and there's there's room for everyone. And so I, I was proud to be a part of the show that could do scenes like that. Um, Spencer, pants splitting aside, how about you? <laughs> um, well, in the, I mean, I always love the musical moments in this show. Mm. I feel like they pick really, really good songs that are specifically like my taste. So like, so like I mean, like in episode, was it eight? where they played Starlight by Muse at the Lingermore party. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was just this whole sequence and it was such a good choice. And there were so many little like scene lets, like the, the Romeo and Juliet nod between um, <laughs> uh, Alice and um, Nick. Yeah, and, yes. and, uh, and, and, um, and there was a she's all that moment too. The she's all that moment. I love these little nods that, that are always popping up. I also really enjoyed, there was a, there was this moment um, at the end of nine where uh, Kat and Elliot are kind of like having, they're, they're sipping on some wine and they're, they're having some banter and they start kind of reading from the mem from the, um, the tour guide book. And I just thought it was such an interesting way for them to like, come, for Kat to come to the realization, like the epiphany that, Oh my gosh, it's Thomas that this is about to make it like humorous. Do you know what I mean? Like it was such a loop to throw me for, and and I I just really enjoyed the way that they played that. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Okay, so you've got another season coming, but I'm not even going to ask for spoilers for this finale because I know that I will get another. I can't tell you, Brian. <laughs> um, but from one to an entire box, how many tissues am I going to need for this finale, Evan? I'd say bring the roll, bring a, bring paper towel because you're going to need some absorption. I think you also just might need like a pillow to scream into. Like, I don't know how much, like part of it's tissues and then part of it is just like, you're just going to need to like be like, what? 
That's all, all right. Well, fair <laughs> enough. And with that, my pond friends, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to these incredible actors and to the Hallmark Channel for such a fun season and such a surprising, well-written, beautifully filmed show. I'm thrilled to be this tiny part of it and join you on this journey. And I hope I get to do it again for season three. In the meantime, everyone should please tune in to the season two finale of The Way Home on Sunday at 9 p.m. 8 central on Hallmark Channel, and it will be on Hallmark Movies Now the following day. Bye. Oh, great. But to see also, everyone. tune in and use the hashtag The Way Home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye bye. Love ya. <laughs>